All right, I am back. Oh, so someone was saying something about a map. If I stick the keyword data into the intern header, it will always be at my fingertips. That's a really good point. Uh, that is a really good point. It is quite a lot of data to have for all of these non-keyword things, but uh, screw it. I... I am not averse to that at all. I don't know how well this fits because the whole abstraction is based on the fact that you're working with raw string pointers. I mean, I like it from the point of view of of of, of merging stuff, but the abstraction it's not really the same abstraction. Now maybe we should do it this way, but then it's not really interning in the traditional way, which is fine. Um Yeah, no, I I already restarted the recording. Thanks for reminding me though. Um yeah, I don't know. I I I like it, but it doesn't fit in with the existing intern abstraction, which is a character to character mapping. Um but maybe uh what we can do is rather than just having this Like what you, what we can certainly do is we can have this as the we can have this thing here um and then we can have a wrapper around it, so this will be like internal um, and then we just have this should be a pointer. And then start intern range, internal intern start, and stir. All right, just remove that for a sec. Um, let's be a little bit responsible about the sizes of these dudes. Um,
Okay, let's do it like this. Um, let me zoom in. Um, All right, and then when we do token name, we now do well, we do this stuff flexor token data stir. Stir turn dot kind See if intern if intern kind is intern name data stir intern kind next range. Okay, so the old stuff still works. Or no, it doesn't. It ignores all of the. So yeah, intern. So this should be the default. Are we mallocking? I guess we need to fill in those fields. Um, Zero and edit so len kind by default we don't have to fill in the other stuff. Okay, so now the names come through. Um, Okay, so let's do x0, x32. Okay, so those don't get correctly identified. Probably because I don't do don't parser. I guess there's a question of where these should be initialized. Um, my thinking was that in the parser is the proper place 
but um, let's just move them to the Luxor. Okay, Still doesn't work. Um, let's see what's going on. So the buff looks reasonable. Oh, it's a dumb typo. Okay, so now it's correctly identifying them. <coughs> See. Oh yeah, this is a good point. Um, all right, so you now wanted to do this, you could say, um, if not his token, or sir, token X reg, there's an error. God, this level of indirection is one reason why I like using globals. Um,
So that seemed to work. I guess I should complain if I don't do this. Yeah. So it's complaining about um, I guess the one, two, three. I mean first off some of these should probably be fatal errors as well, but ignoring that for a sec. Um, oh I guess that's true. So I think 
the way we want to handle instructions is a little bit similar to uh, X registers in that we want to use the intern table to associate um, to as, to associate the name with some sort of description of the instruction. Um, like first off, that it is an instruction, and then from that we can branch off and get uh, information in an instruction table about exactly what kind of instruction it is. Um, I should mention, by the way, the thing that makes me uncomfortable with the scheme more generally is that the way we were using the interning before is that this kind of data didn't live in the intern table, it lived in the symbol table. And I think that's probably the correct way to do it, to be honest. Like if you look at the resolver, for example, oops, if you look at the resolver, um, we have things like the package map, which maps from um, from names to symbols. And it seems to me that probably the right thing to do is to split things up similarly, where the interning is responsible for just the canonicalization of, of names with pointer values, and then you have a symbol table that owns all that um, secondary data. I think that's actually what I'm going to do. Even though this is not, I mean, this is, it's fine, but it kind of conf I think it conflates two separate concerns potentially. Um, so I think I might move that out uh, into a symbol table that's separate from the interning table. Um, but for now, maybe let's just leave it. I was just thinking about it in the context of like instructions and other kinds of data that need to have that association anyway. Like you know, labels need to know their location. Um, and so if you already have that mapping, you might as well use it for everything rather than putting it in here uh, and just keeping this strictly. I mean, you could put everything in here, I suppose. Um, then it becomes more of a standard unified simple table rather than just an interning mechanism, which is fine by me as well. Um, No, I guess that's still maybe not quite the same thing. Because on the other hand, there's other stuff that's more semantic, like whether something is defined to be a label depends on, well, whether, whether it occurs in the label context. You know what, let's just do that. I feel like that's probably the right thing to do. Um, but I, I want to rename it to communicate that change. I'm going to do copy and paste or a search and replace for the remainder, but I just want to do these things manually. So this is really uh, get symbol range.
Yeah, it's not just a case of renaming them. I'm doing these manually. Well, I want to do the implementation manually, and then I'll search and replace the rest. It's just because I'm thinking about it through the sort of like what the what the change in meaning is, rather than just the change in symbols, and it's forcing me to read through it. Um, so I think I never want to really have these things again. Start symbol. Maybe I'll just use that shorthand so I don't have to type these long things. Um, Let's just remove this. Oh yeah. Um just gonna don't want to deal with refactoring that right now. Uh let's put that in Where's it creating that? Weird that it's not showing up. All this junk is gone.
yeah, I think um, David regarding the um, the merging of the two. Like normally, I think it's for re for reusability. Uh, I would say that splitting them up makes sense. But if you're hand coding it for a specific use case like this, you can also just combine them. Um, I think this is okay as well. Um, so we just have one symbol table. So name, label. I think this will work. Uh, and then we want to have like instruction. Well, for now, let's just say we have like reg reg instruction. And you could subdivide the, you could subdivide that. We will call it insta reg reg. And then here, for example, you could do, I mean, this is ad hoc. I'm going to clean this up uh, later, but you know, you could basically do like, if you have a table, sorry, I have to itch my ear. If you have a, um, if you have a table, oops, if you have a table of these, um, of different types of instructions, you could use that to populate this at an init time. That's probably the way to do it. Um, this could even be from an ex external file if you wanted to do it that way rather than code. Um, for now, I'm just going to call it instar. Um, Yeah, you know what though? I feel like this should be in the parser. And not even the core parser, to be honest. Um, I mean, you certainly could. But it feels like this is sort of one level removed from the core syntax. Um, but that does still work. So init parser. Is it really, yeah. It,
me why would that match? So we're doing the initialization. The string we're passing in is add. Why is that already in the map at this point? Oh, that's not what you want. It's because it's already encountered it the first time and interned it, so this really can't be done this way. Um, I see the problem. You can't. Um, like, the side effect of this thing, seeing the first token before we've had a chance to put stuff in, Maybe the Lexer itself shouldn't actually do that. Because, yeah, and I mean, if you wanted to use this for a non LL1 parser, you would also want to use this differently. So I think that's the correct approach. It does mean that the existing Lexer test um, has to be adjusted. Do this manually, which is fine. Right, so now it actually, when you say parse instruction, um, well, I think what you do is you say parse line. If is token parser uh, token instruction, then Parser token stir, parser lexer token stir, parse to say this is the only kind of instruction, at least for the time being. Parse instruction, um, parser name, and
Well, yeah, I guess that's true. We don't really get the stir. I mean, we could. Um, I guess we could just for the time being. Someone's asking about why you use X as a prefix. That's not really up to me. It's up to the instruction set. And they have decided that X is what they use for RISC-V. So I don't particularly like it either. I prefer R as well. But um, in RISC-V, they use X, X0 through X32. All right, um, so um, before we do more stuff, uh, I might go and get some food. I'm pretty hungry, to be honest. Um, the, the thing I'll be working on, and, and most of it is fairly, I guess, rote, but um, basically, um, Rather than building an AST or something like that, the direct side effect of parsing the text is to emit, well, it's a multi-pass assembler, but at least in the second pass and even somewhat in the first pass, the, the, there's a side effect from parsing rather than just constructing AST notes or something like that. The side effect is you know, filling in the symbol table, certainly, uh, which during the first pass is the, the principal uh, intended side effect. But in the, in the final pass, uh, when all labels have been resolved and so on, uh, you will you will Im, Im, you know when you see an add instruction, you are going to emit just like we did in our dynamic assembler. Uh, you are going to emit to a buffer, uh, you know, an add instruction like the encoding of an add instruction. And for that, we're going to be using the same encode instruction stuff we have written. Uh, when we did that. So um, that's essentially going to be the effect of the parsing is to do that sort of thing. And um, before I show off the stream, let me say uh, a small thing about how pass one works. In order to resolve the labels, which is the, the main purpose of completing pass one, um, you have to know how big the instructions are. So um, even though in pass one we won't be emitting the final data, we will be incrementing essentially a pointer that corresponds to where we are. And so in theory, we could fill in the data just with dummy values, but it's easier to just basically don't emit the data, but, but do increment the pointer. And so that way, when you say the label is here, uh, you grab the value of that pointer and fill that into the symbol table so that you know, you know the label is at offset one, two, three, four or whatever. Uh, and then any references to that will be filled in properly in the second pass once everything is in their right place. So um, that's essentially going to be um, be the idea, and that applies also, you know, that applies for both uh, kind of instructions, but also for um, these kind of directives that directly emit raw data, like in our um, in our uh, dynamic assembler, we had these things called emit you went 32 and stuff like that. What do we call it? Excuse me. Um, not emit, assemble. What do we call it? What did we call it? Gosh. Um, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, like this kind of thing. So, so for both the actual instructions and for kind of raw data emission like this, which is common as well when you're like initializing global variables or whatever in a binary image for an assembler, for all of those cases, you're going to basically in the first pass, you're going to increment the pointer, the cursor, the index, whatever you want to call it, um, but you're not going to actually write in any data um, because in pass two, you're going to write it all over again, but this time with all the labels properly resolved. So uh, that's the basic game plan. And... Um, 
that that part of it is not going to be uh, incredibly uh, complicated. If you think about the task relative to what we have right now and what, what we need to go to get there, uh, the main thing is we need to, you know, we need to know that the character, you know, the name add corresponds to the add instruction. So we need a table to map from, um, from, you know, our symbol table entry to the, uh, whatever the opcode ID uh, for the instruction encoder. Uh, and for things like labels, we need to have a, um, our symbol table, which already has support for instructions and, and registers and stuff like that. We need to have an entry type that's like a label where the associated data is a, you know, in this case would be a 32-bit um, address. Uh, and then we fill it in uh, as we, you know, when we see a label, uh, we recognize it in the parser and we assign to that label symbol table entry, we assign it the current value of the, you know, of the output pointer at that point in time. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing today after I get lunch. Um, Apologies for this being bogged down in parsing and not so much in the actual interesting low-level assembly stuff. Again, that's kind of why I didn't want to do this as the first kind of assembly demo. Uh, the dynamic assembly stuff is a more direct way of demonstrating those principles, but this is the kind of thing you do need if you want a traditional text-based assembler. Um, so anyway, uh, I guess we did put in case ranges, which is nice, but um, I will, for next stream, I hope to have a assembler to demo which has let's see instruction emission data emission you know labels um and maybe basic uh support for constant expressions but that's probably going to be uh, very temp initially but uh basically being able to do the kind of things we were already doing with our dynamic assembler but in a you know a string based form text based form so uh, yeah And someone's asking if I went to MIT. I don't know where you heard that. I didn't go to MIT. I didn't. Uh, I, yeah, I went to Aarhus University in Denmark. Anyway, I think that's it for me. I'm going to go get my food now. So uh, thanks for hanging out.